All right, welcome back, Lube Tubers. Just got back from the Harris Chain in Florida for the last Bassmaster Open of the year. We're going to get into that. There's all kinds of uh, wild business going on with uh, MLF, and you know, we're going to talk about what that might mean for the Bassmaster Opens next year. Um, you know, we're going to dive into the Opens a little bit and just have a little chat about it. This isn't a formal official podcast. Uh, you know, just kind of an update. Uh, you know, drove the last few nights and, and hopped right back to work as soon as I got back. So I don't have a guest lined up for, uh, for a full get the net. So just going to get everyone a little bit of an update, you know, dive in and, uh, cover some of the action that's going on right now. You, you know, you'll see the thumbnail and there's a big impossible on there and kind of stole the clickbait out of my boy, Randy's playbook. Just said it was impossible. I, no, I, it's, I didn't say it was. Yeah, it is impossible. Uh, that's <laughs> that's the way it goes. That's how we get you here. So um, our old Randing goes uh, always asking people to subscribe too. So much appreciate that. You might see a little more of me and a little less of well, things like that that you don't want to see if you subscribe and keep everything rolling here. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, just got back from the Harris Chain in Florida. Stop number nine. Uh Pretty big disaster of a tournament for me. I uh, ended up 97th in the 190 boat field or whatever it is. Um, you know, not what I needed to do. It ended up, I think I needed a top 40 to qualify and take that last spot for my buddy Kyle Patrick. And Milliken was just ahead of him. Congratulations to everyone that made it too. It was it was quite a spectacle. It was quite a season. But um, man, that Harris chain just wasn't my week. I was only able to fish uh, limited areas and for a limited amount of time with a whole lot of frustration all week, um, might get into that at a later date, but we don't need to talk about it now. Um, you know, wasn't on anything crazy out there, tried to get up to a pop guy like everyone else and, um, you know, just had bad timing and bad luck and got spun around at the ramp and had to just fish around, had like eight and a half pounds the first day and second day same thing thought i was being smart waited around went up to the lock and there's like 40 people in line so turned around again the lock only allows three boats at a time and i wasn't about to wait i had a short day and wanted to make it happen so i uh went back into the grass and you know milled around and and had all the right bites normie's raising hell down there um take five buddy uh yeah didn't uh didn't expect to have really bites that big but um ended up losing four giant ones um you know one or two of them would have done it for me uh if you know me you know i'm not usually griping about lost fish it's not really my style and to be honest i i haven't really been that haunted by it that many times in the past but it's kind of been the story of the year um my co-angler ended up catching a five a three and like a uh nice keeper on the last day so he at least capitalized on it i uh i didn't make her work and you know after that week and and you know the stress of the practice and everything like that it already wasn't looking good and then when i lost that fourth big one at the boat i just looked at the sky and it was just like well something doesn't want me to go to the elites next year it definitely felt like something was happening for a reason so um you know still was a great year met a ton of great people um had lots of fun and you know never really took for granted how lucky i was to be able to you know rile up enough sponsor support and people i know back home that have been you know pushing me telling me to take it to the next level for a few years while well, they uh you know they stepped it up this year and and contributed to the journey and you know i've got great sponsors 13 fishing is my title sponsor this year I didn't have to worry about rods or reels and you know i wasn't freaking out if i didn't get a check it wasn't the end of the world so uh really grateful to have had the chance and i am not going to fish all nine bass master opens next year um we're having a kid at the end of february beginning of march uh you know first first one of those and i'm not going to be the guy that uh misses the birth of their first child or any child to uh to chase around five bass so that's that's not happening but uh it's looking like i'm gonna sign up for the northern divisions um 
I talked to Hank Weldon yesterday, asked, you know, how it works. Am I going to be able to get in? Because it is super competitive to get in. People have been asking me and the best way I can explain it is like, it's winning a radio contest. It's, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to do a single event. Um, so the top 25 in each division get like an early entry code, um, or maybe the top 25 overall too. I'm not really sure, but, uh, so those guys and the Bassmaster elites get first crack at it like a week early. So I'm fairly confident that I'm going to get into those Northerns. That's Leech Lake, um, La Crosse, Wisconsin on the Mississippi river and Lake St. Clair. Absolutely not in that order, but you can check out the schedule. Um, so looking forward to that. Just want to stay relevant, uh, stay fairly close to home because these opens are, you know, I've had some, some, guys from back home and some younger guys kind of asking about it. And, um, I mean, this year was crazy. People are asking me, like, I can't believe you're not going again. Like you were so close and like, they do not understand the commitment and the effort and the grind that it is, you know, it sounds like nothing. You're just going fishing while, well, you know, I, I had to be back at work every Monday and, uh, I probably spent a total of 18 nights in my truck, maybe a little bit more. Like I'm 34 years old. <laughs> My back is like not that dialed from carrying around the big rig. So sleeping in your truck is about the last thing you want to do. And it's like, well, I'll just get a, go get a hotel. Well, it's not that simple. There's lots of sketch down there. And, you know, I don't want to leave. My whole life is in my truck and boat uh, gear wise. So I'm not just going to leave it at any sketchy hotel and go. And So, yeah, we're going to fix that up a little bit next year. I got a, a deal with the, a uh, truck camper company that i'm going to announce pretty soon here so i'm excited for that um and you know it's going to be good to have a little bit of stress off but i mean the the burden on everything around home from doing something like this is extra wild like i've got projects and everything that have just been neglected um you know lots of things i should be doing around here and and then it just piles up i mean your main focus is fishing all year and and you know it's it's easy for say, someone to say who haven't hasn't tried it and uh oh i just got a text i gotta go cut the spaghetti squash soon so i won't <laughs> i won't stay on here for too long uh it's easy to say for someone who hasn't tried it and i get that it's you know it's fun to to root for the underdog and everything like that um you know or, or someone from the north uh like we all have for years with gussie um but that it's uh it's an interesting thing i still love it uh you know i will say that some of those long drives home you're wondering what you're doing like you're going to places that hardly have any bass and you know leaving the the best fishing in north america essentially to go down there and chase it but um you know i still love it i still want at it and i'm probably gonna make the full return in 2025 but that is enough about me let's look at what the opens are going to look like right now there's a lot of speculation uh with mlf um you know, cutting down to 50 in 2025, that's going to leave 30 anglers plus 10 more qualifier, more qualifiers, roughly. Um, it's going to leave a bunch of people without jobs. Um, well, she really wants me to cut that squash. Hello. Hey. I'll be right up. Yeah, come cut the squash just <laughs> um so yeah there's going to be a lot of really good anglers without a place to go uh if you look at the flw tour the payout structure really is terrible people gripe on the opens but you're only risking 1800 to you know make that back in a lot of cases and the top prize is really close to what it would be on the flw tour i keep calling it flw tour that's just what i'm going to call it that's the invitationals um the top prize is comparable i mean let's be honest you're not making money doing this either way you slice it you got to be active um you know on lube tubing and writing and and podcasts and photos and all kinds of videos and seminars and sports show appearances and everything that i've already been doing so it's not you know none of this is like earth shattering to me I've, that's why i do all this stuff is in part to uh, you know have have some backup in the fishing world because you're not going to make it off tournament earnings. I don't care who you are. Um, but anyway, a, a lot of the speculation is these guys are going to jump in the, 
Bassmaster opens and even further challenge the field this year. Um, I think everyone was shocked at, at the talent of the anglers this year in the field. Um, you know, people were counting Bobby Lane and Ish Monroe as shoe ins and neither of them qualified. Uh, you know, all the guys that came over from the FLW tackle warehouse invitationals, the top finisher was Josh Bragg. I had him circled coming into the year cause he had finished 15th, uh, you know, overall AOI on the other circuit. And I was like, okay, well, he's going to have a good chance. He's been around and, and, you know, he had some good ones this year and some tough ones and finished 39th and was the highest finishing, uh, FLW guy that came over, uh, Taylor Watkins was like a top money winner in NPFL, uh, in 2021 came over and was in the eighties. Um, it, it's not easy at all. And, and you get a direct bar to compete against like Drew Cook, uh, fished all the, all the, you know, opens in the first division. He had a 27th, a 106, the 145 Hackney, 179, 25th, 150th, Steve Kennedy, 180, 131, 140. So, you know, the top level guys, a lot of them, you know, that being said, Kenta Kamara requalified again. So, uh, you know, he's just cakewalking it and, and the highest level guys are going to be able to, to make it happen. But, um, I really don't think that there's going to be a drastic impact in talent level from the MLF, especially the bottom 30 guys coming over. Uh, so I, I wouldn't let that deter you from, you know, signing up for the opens or giving it a shot. Cause it's probably just going to keep getting harder. Um, you know, it was a bunch of really good college anglers this year. Um, Milliken, JT, they didn't do the college thing. Kyle Patrick, he's been at her for a few years, uh, you know, knocking on the door. And then right behind them, there's like 15 or 20 more people that could have easily qualified had, you know, had things gone their way a little bit more this year. So it's, uh, you know, don't let it deter you if you're looking at it. I'm sure some of these guys are going to end up in the opens, but I don't think it's going to be like earth shattering, like everyone thinks. So, so that's, I mean, that's my two cents on it. Um, it's really tough. It's highly competitive. Uh, a lot of these guys that made it, you know, were able to pre-practice and, and I think JT said he put six or 700 hours on his boater this year. Like it is all they care about a lot of them and you're going to have to compete against that. And I promise you, it's not just live scope. Uh, you know, these guys caught half their fish shallow this year. You look at Wesley Gore up skipping a frog in a canal and like, it's, it, they're just all around, um, freaking good and super hard to compete with. So don't think that the MLF guys coming over are going to rattle it too much. Um, it is disappointing for the sport. Uh, you know, the MLF shakeup was kind of supposed to better everything pretty much did nothing to better the sport of fishing other than some conservation efforts. Um, you know, the catchway release is, um, that's, that's my two cents there. I would like to see a whole bunch of them come over and, and hop into the, into the opens with, uh, with all the good anglers that are going to be there next year. There was 173 fishing all nine this year, 89 the year before 45, the year before that. It is hard to predict. Uh, I think there's going to be a big influx of college anglers coming. Uh, they've seen six or seven of their peers, you know, just qualify for the elite series. Uh, those are really the guys to be watching for. And, uh, you know, guys that have been doing the opens game and knocking on the door for a while. So, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, going to be pretty cool heading up north. I do appreciate everyone following along this year. It was super cool to have all that support from back home and, um, you know, loving the sport so much. It was really cool to be on the other side of it just for a little taste. Um, no regrets here and going to get back at her in, in a little bit here. But if you're thinking about signing up, I would still do it. Bassmaster is still the premier option as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, it's only going to get harder. So don't wait any longer if you're going to jump in. That's it for me. Like, subscribe, all that. And we'll see you on the next Get the Net podcast.